Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Consciousness Unleashed podcast with Bonnie Seratori. I'm your co-host, Cynthia. Bonnie Seratori is a master energy tracker, master energy healer, spiritual accelerator, and the founder of Spiritual Acceleration. You can find all her work at spiritualacceleration.com, including all episodes of Consciousness Unleashed. Um, Today, we're going to be talking about depression. And this is a huge topic. This is so important because there's millions and millions of people around the world who have depression, whether they know it or not. And there's not many known solutions out there. But I know Bonnie has a lot to say about this. She does have answers. And we'll be talking about um, some of those experiences that her clients have had um, on healing their depression a little later. But I have a bunch of questions before that. So, Bonnie, how are you? I'm good. Excited. Good topic. Yeah, Great a very topic. good topic. Ooh. Oh, my God. Right now, people need it so much more than before. Yes. Really. Yes. Okay. So, my first question is, I want to help people have a better understanding of, uh, like, what depression really is. Like, it's not really just an emotion or negative beliefs. It's really like a state or of being, or maybe mm-hmm. you could call it like a mood, right? Mm-hmm. Um, where it kind of feels like people have shut down mm-hmm. and have given up or they're just not really there or present really in their mm-hmm. lives. And right. I've heard you talk about this before where um, when people are depressed, they're depressing their emotions or pushing mm-hmm. them down. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so could you talk about that aspect of depression? Yes. I mean, this is true for everyone, okay? So what happens is, when we have a, 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 an experience where we have emotions, let's just make it real simple. Let's just say you're a kid growing up and what's happening is you're being told something that makes you feel angry or upset at your parents. Okay. Maybe they won't let you do something. Maybe they won't let you have something. Maybe they are angry with you because you're putting something you know that, that you shouldn't be doing, whatever. So what happens is we have this innate desire to be loved. Anything that threatens that is go hits us hits us into survival, life, death, survival, reptilian brain. Okay, because survival means we must be loved, otherwise we're going to die. We've got many many experiences of that. So we have an emotion, we get upset, or we feel hurt, or we get angry with our parents, and we feel resentment, we feel angry, we feel these these feelings when we're really young. And because that frequency of survival kicks in, we'll we'll suppress some of those emotions. Now, I'm not saying that as we get older, we don't feel them, but we because we get angry with our parents. But there's something about when we have certain emotions, we push them down because we're in that survival mode. We're in that mode of I must be loved. I need to be loved. Okay, and not consciously, but subconsciously. Those kinds of emotions, they get pushed down, and then we never feel them. We bury them. So buried emotions cause depression. It's, just think about it. You're depressing something. Now, it could be a major trauma. Maybe some kind of intense thing happened to you as a kid growing up. Maybe you were abused mentally, emotionally, physically. Maybe there was sexual abuse. I can't tell you how many people have been sexually traumatized and don't have even memory of it until we start unraveling. So basically, the basics really are there is a depressing energy. We're depressing, pushing down, holding something back, burying it in the subconscious. And then, and then a lot of some people, they're, you know, they go into dark places. Like sometimes it's like in and out of feeling depressed and then happy, almost like a manic, almost like that bipolar thing, but not everyone's bipolar. It's just that. We're pushing stuff down. We have time when we feel better. Then that energy starts to come up. We push it back down. And when we have people with severe depression, oftentimes there's actually carryover happening from past incarnations. So we're carrying that experience into this lifetime. And another component that adds to it is you've got other discarnates coming in that are also depressed, that are also hurt and have deep, deep, deep emotions of un 
uh, un unprocessed, unrecognized, when we're not going in and knowing them and feeling them. So those energies are also getting pushed down. So there's a lot of components happening where people feel depressed. But basically, the, the foundation of it really is the word depressing. We are depressing, we're pushing down, pressing something down, not feeling it. So that's pretty much what's really going on that anyone can understand. I want to get into um, the spiritual kind of component of it, or energetic component of it, of depression. So you are a spiritual healer and you're an energy healer. Mm -hmm. So you have different abilities than a lot of people. You could see the energy. And so mm -hmm. could you talk about like from your perspective, like what do you really see that's contributing uh -huh. to depression? Right. Okay. Let's just say that someone comes to me. I'm going to have, I have to track someone. Otherwise I can't, cause I can't make it up. Okay. Hang on. So if I look, I'm going to go back into your life or maybe Chris's <laughs> life. Sorry. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's okay. If you want to use it, you've used me so many times and okay. <laughs> these yeah, yeah, yeah. episodes go ahead. <laughs> okay. And I, I did, I was depressed for many years to the point where like, I couldn't function. I couldn't even hold a job right. and right. I was suicidal. So you could use me. Fine. That's okay. fine. All right. So what I do is I track, I go, I look back in time. Okay. So what I'm doing now is I'm looking at your energy I can definitely a lot more like that. Absolutely. But I'm going to go way, way back. I'm going to go back further, further, further. And I'm going to start looking where I start to see some of that depression, that really dysfunctional depression. So what happens for me, because you're asking me, what, what do I see? What do I sense? That kind of thing. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at Cynthia's life. I'm looking at where she is now on the energy in her inner, in her field, her body, her emotional body, all the levels of who she is. I'm tracking back in time because I want to get a sense of how intense, how dark did it go? So I go back and I can also see when she was in a state of really, really black depression, some of the suicidal thoughts, some of those energy frequencies, literally her body is actually has a lot of discarnates in it that are also contributing to the intensity that she was feeling. Now, when I go further, further back, I want to go back in her childhood so I can start to see. I'm going to go all the way back. Okay, hang on. So I'm tracking back. What I'm doing is I'm looking at her energy, looking at her light, looking at the darkness. What happens is depression has a certain frequency, a certain color, and a, de a texture, things of that nature. Because I, I, when I see depression, I know immediately it's depression. Okay, so as I'm looking at that, you know, truthfully, I have to say, this is carryover because I'm looking at her energy. I'm going right into the womb. And even in the womb, there's a frequency of a vibe. I'm seeing her energy vibrating at a certain frequency. And it's showing me that even in the womb, she's already in a state of anxiety. Okay. So what's happening is she's feeling the frequency of her mother, the frequency that her mother holds does not make her feel safe. It does not make her feel like she's really, hang on, is she really, yeah, here, like not really wanted, okay? It's not like some parents, they're like really excited, open, wanting, welcoming a, new, a baby. Well, that's not really happening in her mother's energy field, okay? But let me, I'm going to back up even further, then I'll move forward. So when I go back, what's actually happened is the being now known as Cynthia has, has carryover, like her last lifetime, whoa, okay, hang on, hang on. Her last lifetime, there's severe depression, almost mental illness, okay, um, states of, de of severe depression. But, you know, I can track that further back too. And even, let me just go back even further. Did it begin in that? No, it didn't begin in that lifetime. So it began even further, further back, okay? But what's happening for me, so you understand, is I'm seeing her in the womb. I'm seeing her her energy and it starts to vibrate. That shows me there is some trauma already. She's already anxious. When I track back, I'm looking at a lifetime. I see her as a, in a lifetime. I see the images, the visuals of that lifetime. But I'm also looking at the frequency of depression. And I'm asking her higher, I'm going direct to her super consciousness. And I'm being shown that it's her depression energy started actually like three lifetimes back. Prior to this lifetime, she had a major experience, a major loss. I see her as a young child, happy. Um, there, yeah, and then something happens. There's a major loss. That loss is so intense that begins the feelings of severe heartache, heartbreak, loss. Okay. 
So now she spent three lifetimes coming to the place in this lifetime where she actually unraveled it, but she did it by going in and feeling like this is what I teach. You got to go in and feel. And then in those feeling states, she was able to, you know, embracing and feeling those deep places. But what happens is the discarnates that are so holding that they can't live in the same frequency. So they've, they actually left her body. Okay. Um, but when I come into this lifetime, okay, it got amplified in this lifetime in the womb because the mother, hang on a second, did her mom actually, no, see, her mom didn't really bond with her. I don't mean to be talking third person, but your mom didn't really bond with you, Cynthia. I think you know that on some level. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So even in the womb, you're coming in, the mother doesn't bond. Your frequency is already in a, in a state of anxiety. There is a, a stress factor happening. And now you're born into the, into the world. And that little baby, remember, it's all about survival and, and needing to be loved. But you weren't, weren't feeling that. You are already, whoa, got it. Okay. Literally, you're already, like when you're born, you're already like, in a state of shock, okay, a, a state of anxiety, a state of fear of being here, a lack of love, it feels like a lack of love. So your energy field is completely being um, uh, in an ang anxious state and anxiety frequency. So of course, as time goes by, there's more feelings, more emotions, and then pretty soon you're just collapsing in depression, okay. So the work that you did, even on your own, and I can see that was where the energy shifted. You know, I can see it energetically. So you, the blackness started to lift. The blackness mean the emotions and buried emotions that weren't never felt in all those other lifetimes. Now she's feeling them. Now she's facing them. Now she's unraveling them and clearing them so that she is now in a much more higher frequency, a vibrational frequency, and is holding so much more light than she was in all those past lives and actually early in her life, okay? So basically what happens for me is I see the energy, whatever I'm looking for, that's what presents, like I'm looking for depression. I'm looking to see how big was it? How intense was it? How massive was it? You know, and I can, and I can track that and see that and sense that. And then of course, it's always about clearing it and releasing that you've done an amazing job on your own uh, to unravel it, you know, in this lifetime, which is friggin' awesome totally awesome. I just want to give some background clarity on what you mentioned and people who don't and maybe they've never seen our podcast before. Mm -hmm. And um, like I, I said in the last podcast, it's not live yet while we're talking right now, but in our last podcast episode, I, I mentioned that you don't really know anything about me. And right. so I when you, I really yeah, don't. You, <laughs> I really, I swear I don't. That's, you know? That's true. And yeah. I told, I just told her before we started recording, I just told Bonnie that um, I had depression because this was the topic today. So I, I just told her literally that I, I clear, I healed my depression on my own, my feeling. And then mm -hmm. I never gave her any other details. So I just kind of just want to add clarity to that, that um, mm -hmm. all the stuff that you're talking about that you were reading, reading me like mm -hmm. in, mm -hmm. in the moment, like that was, right. and all that stuff was spot on. Mm -hmm. like uh, ever since I like for when I can remember as a kid like always felt afraid yeah but then wow. eventually yeah I did <clears throat> I ended up on the spiritual journey and the healing journey and I found out that I had to feel my stuff and that was counter to what a lot of people were teaching me mm -hmm. right <laughs> but a part of me just felt like well I already feel this way deep down anyway I'm gonna feel it as much as I can because I know that's that's the way and when I did that and I kept doing that, it was so intense and it took me a long time because I was literally on my own doing it. Right, you know, I hadn't right. found your wow. work yet. Right. And, but I just kind of knew that I had to go as deeply as I can mm -hmm. into these. And it took, it took me a long like years to get to the point where I was mm -hmm. actually functional in life. Right. And I could hold a job. <laughs> and now I work wow. for you, which is awesome. Wow. So, wow, wow. so wow. yeah, I mean, yeah. that was that's a success story for sure. And that's something I wanted to talk about a little bit later, which is like success stories, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, like I told you before we started recording, I met a retired therapist and he told me in his decades of working with people, he never met anyone who cured his depression and their depression. And he was shocked when I told him that I was able to do it. And that's why he shared that with me. Mm -hmm. And, and it made me realize that, yeah, he's, you know, it's so many people really, um, 
have these, they have depression, whether they know it or not. And Mm -hmm. they don't really have any tools or, right. And I did, I used to work um, in the mental health field for a little bit as well. And I, I know, you know, I'm not trying to knock traditional like therapy. Sure. I'm, I'm not, yeah. there's a place for all of it. Yeah, but, it has its place. It really does. Yeah, it does. It's a, good, it's a stepping stone. Right, it's right. It's stages and it's a stepping stone. Yeah. Yes, yes. And, but I'm, I'm saying all this because I just want people to have hope if they're experiencing depression or they know people and maybe nothing has worked. Mm-hmm. Well, Bonnie's work, what she teaches, it really does. And mm-hmm. so maybe we should go, since we're talking about this right now, maybe we should go into um, uh, the Chris, Chris Williams, oh, who yeah. is yeah, on yeah, your yeah. team. Yes. He, I heard uh, his story. And okay. if you want to share a little bit about that, to maybe just, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So Chris also was severely depressed. He had um, been to many, many modalities, you know, lots of therapy, lots of uh, different things that he did. And what happened for him is he had a teacher and that teacher was actually taking my program and she was a, you know, she was a great teacher and she, and what she did was completely different, but, you know, she turned him on to me and the first session he was changed. The first session lifted his depression. It was the first thing that he found that actually worked and changed his life. So what happened was, is, after working with me for a bit, you know, for different things, he, once he learned it, man, he, he understood whatever I got running, take it, she's going to unravel it and I'm going to be done with it. And that's what happened. And he was so blown away by the work. He was actually studying acupuncture and he did finish his school. And that was his, that was what he was going to be doing in the world was being doing acupuncture. But what happened was he took my program, he became one of the healers and now he's one of the heavy hitters in spiritual acceleration. He teaches and he does see that has sessions, but his life has completely changed. He's no longer depressed. The guy is, a, he's just like, he's such a precious being, but depression's gone, but his life changed drastically by this work. So much so that he chose to do this rather than go into acupuncture. You know, I personally think when you see people in person, you can do both. You know what I'm saying? So he's got those skill levels and he'll be able to do that. Yeah, but it was amazing, life-changing for him. That's really awesome to hear. I remember listening to that live stream months ago that you did with him. And I mm-hmm. will link, I'll put the link below so people could watch that Good and idea. hear him talk about it. Right. And he said right. something like um, in one session, like I think it was like seven years of depression just lifted. And I was yeah. blown away by that testimonial. <laughs> but I also because I knew your work already at that point. I was like, yeah, I could see that. <laughs> Even it took me years. It took him one session or something because I could see your, your work is just so deep and yeah. profound. And I think that's, yeah. you know, I wanted to really um, bring up those different experiences because those are so drastically different, right? right. Like my experience and his and yeah, right. go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, because I met with Ofer, he's on the team as well. He's no longer an accelerator, but he's on, he's one of our back in people. But Ofer also, for him, he uses all kinds of different modalities because he studies, he's the kind of person that will try and learn all kinds of different things. So his tool bag is like full, all right? But no matter what he's doing, he always comes back to what he learned with me because it's the most potent, powerful, life-changing, effective work. Yeah, so he just, like I said, many, 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 many modalities, many things he learned, but nope, this all he always comes back to this. Yeah. All right, Bonnie. Yeah, definitely. I know, I know that's, um, I know that you're the best. (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's the work you guys, I mean, truly it's the work, you know? Yeah. (laughs) Um, Bonnie earlier talked about anxiety and you mentioned how I had anxiety when I was a kid in, in the womb really. And I've heard about how, if you have anxiety, it could eventually lead to depression Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm wondering, what is what have you witnessed with that? Like, what's the link between anxiety and depression? Yeah. Well, kind of like you said, for example, let's come back to you so people can relate. So in the womb, there was an anxiety feeling. OK, so there was an anxious feeling. There was a feeling of fear, anxiety. And again, for you, as with most people, it felt like you weren't loved. Now, remember, 
survival is based on being loved. We we hit that unconscious energy in our in our unconscious and in that second chakra, first chakra, life does survival. So when you came into the womb, you already felt that your mother wasn't conscious. You know, how can I say? She wasn't fully in her body. She had her own trauma. And because she didn't bond with you, that's when the biggest things that happens for people is when the mother doesn't bond with the baby. It's like you're like being thrown out in outer space with no, no umbilical cord. Okay. It's terrifying. So what happened for you in that whole place where anxiety becomes depression, anxiety became a state of, of distress. It was a state of fear. Okay. It was a state of not being loved. And it created all these emotions that an infant, a fetus cannot process. Okay, so what happens is the survival mode reptilian brain pushes those emotions down so that you can handle your existence. Okay, but what happens is that anxiety, if you were to watch the anxiety, okay, just imagine, let's just say this, okay, let's just say this is her in the womb. Okay, so she's in the womb of the mother, okay, and without that mother bonding, without that cording, that, 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 that uh, subconscious cording that happens where she bonds, there's nothing to bond her. There's nothing holding her. So the body, her little body, her little emotional body starts to shake vibrationally like that, like that. Okay. Anxiety, anxiety, anxiety. So because anxiety is something, if you don't process it, it doesn't go away. So she's already got a fear level happening, unsafe, not wanted, not belonging, not loved, anxiety, 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 okay? She comes into the world, gets birthed into the world, and that doesn't go away because nothing's changed. The mother, even, okay, yeah, yeah, I can see it. Well, all right, so the mother actually, oh, man, I'm sorry. The mother doesn't bond at all. It's almost like, it's not that she, does she even care? It's like, it's, she does care, but there's not, there's something with the mother where she's not able to bond with the baby. She's not protecting the baby. She's not giving the baby love, you know, holding, loving, caring, that kind of stuff. So the baby, even more anxiety. And then cut, and as she starts to grow up, she starts pushing these feelings down. Okay. So again, remember depression happens. You got anxiety, you push it down. It's going to go into the subconscious. It's going to start to create a depression because now that just the feeling of anxiety, feeling unsafe, not love, those emotions didn't go away. They didn't go away. They just got pushed down. Okay. So now, now the depression, depression, depressing, pushing down. Now these energies are still lodged in her subconscious. All these energies, these fears, all this stuff is still there. You just don't see it anymore. Okay. You can't see it. Look, can you see it? Can you see she's vibrating? Can you see she's traumatized? No, you can't. Okay. But it's still happening. That's still happening in the subconscious. And that's what happens. So Bonnie, you talked about certain different emotional components of like feeling unloved, feeling unsafe, mm -hmm. survival. And, and in a video you did not too long ago on YouTube, you talked about how um, anger is not, you talked about underlying causes of anger and right, that anger right. is not a core emotion. So all those things are those core emotions. And are, is that, <clears throat> is it mostly core emotions that contribute to depression? Yeah. Okay. So let's, so this is good because everything, all the feelings of not being loved, feeling like you're not enough, you're not wanted, you don't belong. Okay. All of those feelings literally sit on top of the actual true core emotion, which is initial separation. Okay. Everything comes from that. Okay. The initial separation where we were part of the, all that is, there's no sense of self. There's nothing, that state of nothing, no thing. There's no thoughts. There's no emotions. You're just existing in awareness. Okay. What happens is, is the moment we become aware of our own awareness, that's the initial separation from the all that is. That's the angst of everybody. All of humanity has the angst of the separation, the initial separation from the all that is. And from there, everything began to uh, become what where we are now, okay? But yes, the core, core, core initial separation is the key. And from that, it has that feeling of I'm not loved, 
I'm not wanted. I don't belong. I'm not enough. I'm damaged. There's something wrong with me. I'm unworthy. All these other pieces came from initial separation. I just wanted to clarify that. Thank you for that, Bonnie. And I want to tell people that there is a upcoming energy, group energy clearing that's called Sadness to Happiness. And that is coming up on March 24th. Mm. And it's a live group clearing, but like any of the group clearings you do, they there's replays and it's just yeah. as effective if yeah. you watch the replay as it, uh, as you mm. were to come live. Right. So right. for those listening after March 24th, don't worry, you can still, you can still purchase it and it's going to be incredibly, incredibly powerful. Right. So this clearing your, it's specifically called sadness to happiness. And it's definitely going to help people who have depression, but I know that sadness doesn't feel as, I guess, deep or is not a, is not the same level, the same intensity mm-hmm. of as depression. So what could people expect if they wanted to go into this clearing and uh, what could they expect if they had depression and like, what's, what would you say the differences between just like sadness generally and depression? Right. Well, sadness, I mean, you know, everybody experiences sadness in some way at some point in time, you know, whether it's a loss or so we get judged or we get feel like we're being abandoned or betrayed. So those all cause us to feel sad. Those are not depressions. All right. So when we feel sad, um, the difference between people that are going into depression and people that are just having emotional experiences that are pretty normal has to do with the whole thing around, are they feeling it? Are they embracing it? And then also the intensity, okay? So sometimes, you know, as little kids, we feel like our mommy or daddy doesn't love us because something happened, but it's not, we don't go into depression around it, you know? We, we have a sadness and, and we lose somebody or, or we get betrayed, but we go, th- we know we have some of the, we go through the emotions of that. Maybe we're not going all the way through, but we are feeling those emotions and processing them to some degree. Therefore, we're not going to create depression. Okay. So the sadness is something that we all experience. It's a natural state that we, uh, that we all know by being in the body. Uh, There's always something, some kind of loss, some kind of something, you know, that will cause us to feel the sadness. Again, most people actually cry things out or go through stuff on the emotions and therefore they're not holding on and they keep moving forward in their world and in their life. Yeah, but it's those that really push, push stuff down that, you know, there's a propensity to have depression, you know, so that's what happens for, for people. So emotions are natural, normal. The more we embrace them, the freer we are. And for those listening and you're curious about whether or not Bonnie has a group clearing in the shop that's on depression. There is one Mm -hmm. and it's really powerful, um, really good one. So I will leave a link in the description if you're interested in that. And please let us know if you want Bonnie to do maybe a future one specifically on depression. Let us know in the comments, um, tag us on social Mm -hmm. media and let us know if that's something maybe you want, if there's enough requests. Right. Would you do that if there's enough requests, Bonnie? Because I think it's really needed right now, like a, right. a new yeah. one, a new live. Uh, sure. Yeah, we can do it. Absolutely. Yes. Which also reminds me, Cynthia, we do have a workshop where we actually go, you know, go into all the emotions, the core emotional workshop, which is in person, he, major, major life transformation. So that's also something people have the opportunity to participate in, to have support and guidance and the unraveling of really deep places that you don't want to face on your own. I mean, think about it. Depression is, I don't want to go there. Okay. So, but if you're safe and someone's guiding you and unraveling stuff, you can go there. Yes. The core emotional workshop that will be in the summer. Is that right? Is that yeah. is it June? It's, yeah. Um, I, it's either June. Or, I think it's in July, actually. I think it's the second weekend of July, somewhere in there. Okay, well, I'll check and then I will leave a link in the description. I'll let people know in that way um, yeah. so they could look at that. And that is, excuse me, that is three days in person with Bonnie. Yeah. And I think there's also a, a, a component like a few months after online, right? That's a follow up. Yes, it's more than that. Um, for three months, you have my support. So we meet uh, for about an hour every month. You also get a couple sessions with an accelerator to unravel or help 
um, help recalibrate, help help release even more. Because a lot of things get lit up. You're not going to get through everything in a workshop and big things happen. And you need that support and guidance and also uh, healings that will help balance you out. So yes, it's, it's it goes on for three months after the workshop, which is awesome. So you got my support and then you also have a couple clearings that you get to have as well. All right. Thank you so much, Bonnie. This was a very incredible episode, very informative. And uh, thank you, really, because really people really need this right now. Mm-hmm. It's so needed in the world right now. Yeah, I, I think there's more people depressed now than ever before. And oh, yeah. so, yes. So thank you for all your insights and thank you for all the work you do. And it's always a pleasure to talk to you on this podcast. Everybody, if you're listening on YouTube, please like this video, subscribe if you're new, and leave a comment below. Let us know what you think about the, this uh, topic. Let us know if you want a future clearing for that Bonnie does for depression and anything else you want to share. Maybe you have your own story of your own depression. Let us know. We, we really do care. And we want to hear what what you need so that we could help serve you greater later in the future. And for those listening on Apple, please leave a review for Consciousness Unleashed. And Bonnie, thank you again so much. Thank you, everybody. Bye. All righty. Thank you, Cynthia.